What's going on YouTube? Let's get into the first shop upgrade here. So we got some commercial high bay lights, the Lithonia IBEs, um, some newer Romex, some 12.2 with 0 to 10 volt 16.2, all on the same spool, and a 0 to 10 volt dimmer. So this stuff is pretty sweet here. Um, this right here is your normal 12.2. Romex wire that you have in your house and then on the same patch they have the pink and uh, purple wires for 0 to 10 volts so that's your control cable and 0 to 10 volt is the commercial form of dimming or one of the commercial forms of dimming that you can have and they're coming out with residential products that support commercial dimming so yeah excited to try this stuff out and ready to get into it all right, so this is what your Romex is going to be look like at the end here. Um, so you got your normal 12-2 uh, black white ground, so that's your hot neutral ground, and then here's your two separate wires, um, purple and pink. That's going to be your zero to ten volt dimming. So the only real difference between normal Romex, quote unquote, and this kind of Romex is just these two wires. Um, and all it is is for dimming so just two extra wires and it shouldn't be too big of a, a deal for you here so here's um, a Lutron Diva switch um, and this has 10, 0 to 10 volt dimming so this is just like your normal switch but just like this Romex it's got an extra set of wires for the dimming so here's your red neutral black hot and this red wire is for if you want a three-way switch. Your green is for ground. And then your pink and your purple here are just for dimming. So all you do is hook these guys up color to color. And away you go. So let's start wiring this in and get some lights up here. So here's what your light looks like at the top. Pretty similar to the other ones. So you got pink purple and here's your 0 to 10 volt green is ground and neutral and black and just color code wire those together and should be on your way here's a look of the space prior to starting this project this is what our existing light levels look like all right now we're in this clip we're starting to measure where our fixtures are going to be placed so using that existing truss in the middle as a reference point and measuring all of our purlins to get a center point off of that we're going to use the dimensions from the manual in order to get the exact mounting points that we're going to put our screw hooks eventually so So here's some hooks that I just picked up at Home Depot here, and this is what we're going to hang the light fixtures from. And so these are just your normal screw hooks. So we'll recap of where we're at here. We got wood up here, J box right next to it, and have all the lines marked up there. You probably can't see it, but what we're going to do is um, hang the fixtures from these hooks up here. And, uh, yeah, so let's keep on rolling here. All right, y'all, just wanted to preference why there's an extra piece of wood here. So the fixture to the right of this um, wouldn't be at the same height unless I added this piece of wood because the way that the purlins are mounted, they're staggered. And so in order to make all the fixtures the same height, I had to add this piece of wood. In hindsight, 
probably wouldn't make too much of a difference, but it's just one of those nitpicky things that I wanted it to be all the same height. So that's what I ended up doing. Hey, got one light fitted. Here we go. That's what she looks like. All right, in this clip, I'm showing you that you need to untangle your wire prior to putting it up in the ceiling. Otherwise, your wire's not gonna run flat and it will be all tangled and it will just be harder to work with. And this is also just looks more professional without any kinks in it. So make sure you untangle your wire. So, now that we got the Romex flattened out, we can start going from J-Box to J-Box. And also, before we get started here, what you're going to need is some, uh, oh, here we go, some 3 sixteenths <clears throat> wood staples. Your typical half-inch uh, wood staples aren't going to um, hold the Romex type here. So, a little bit thicker um, staple to... Get the extra wire from the zero to ten volt dimming um, under the staple. So keep that in mind. Starting to get into stapling, a couple rules about where staples need to go. Um, so from your J box to your first point of contact outside of your J box, it needs to be within three, <clears throat> eight inches stapled next to your J box. And then Romex is four and a half feet uh, every interval that you need to put a staple um, to hold it up securely for the NEC. So, Let's add a couple more staples and get after it. Alright y'all, let's get into wiring some fixtures here. So, while I have this on the ground, I'm going to pre-wire the um, Romex from the light up to the J-Box while we're on the ground, so we're not trying to do it while we're up in the air. So, uh, let's get into that. I just cut a piece of Romex here um, that has the 0 to 10 in it and cut about 3 feet to give us uh, a little bit of extra space. Um, so let's get our knife out. The key to cutting with wire strippers is you cut at an angle. So use the force to kind of your wrist rollover action to cut the wire off. And then it just slips right off. So
let's do a little recap here. So here's the light fixture. Got the Romex coming out from the light fixture, stubbed up into the J box. Got a staple eight inches from the box and then got two clamps. So here's the inside of the J box. Um, in the back right, top right, got the ground screw, got my grounds, whites and neutrals, and wagos, and then got the pink and purple uh, zero to 10 wired up in the front. Um, yeah, so there we go, and that's what it looks like for one of the four uh, light fixtures all wired up. Just need to put a cover plate on this thing and it's ready to go. So three more of those.